What is up enthusiasts, it is Cedar Flags here and welcome back to another one of my videos. So as you may know, Cedar Fair and Six Flags have officially merged into one massive company that is going to oversee over 40 locations. To see these two companies finally coming together, this is going to be absolutely massive. Now, I did make a video a few days ago talking about the initial news and what we know about the Six Flags Cedar Fair merger, but today, I'm going to look into the future. Instead of telling you the facts, I am going to be predicting the future of this joint company. For a little bit of a recap, Six Flags and Cedar Fair are one company now, under the name Six Flags, so when I'm referring to the new company, I will say the new Six Flags. So remember, when I say that, I'm including Cedar Fair as well. Also, before I get into the video, I just want to let you all know that these are all my opinions and predictions. This is nothing in fact, so if one of these things doesn't happen, it is not set in stone. Anyways, let's get into it. This is Cedar Flags, and today, we are going to be predicting the future of Six Flags and Cedar Fair. Prediction number one. There will be new ways to connect to your season pass. In the presentation of their merger, they said that there would be a big focus on technology being pushed within the chain. And they were talking about certain apps and certain software. I don't think any improvements to our technology is going to happen immediately, but I could see all of the Cedar Fair apps closing down and it being under the Six Flags app. That app could have more storage, more information, and it could be an absolute powerhouse. Plus, it would be a major app that would have over 40 parks accessed through one app. In, in my opinion, that would be absolutely incredible. And of course, talking about the season passes, I also think that this will be reduced down to one. Now, I am both a Six Flags and Cedar Fair pass holder, and I want to personally say that I really hope that this becomes one. And I know it's going to be more, I know it's going to be more money at the end of the day, but at the same time, it's probably going to be less than one you're currently paying for Cedar Fair and Six Flags right now. I could see other plans implemented with this app and Season Pass as well, like a new dining plan and a new drink plan as well. One more thing I want to mention is the Fast Pass system. Even though their Fast Pass systems are a little different, I feel like if one were to implement another, it would not be too hard for the other parks to adjust. Prediction number two. Theming will be exchanged between parks. You see a lot of this happen over time. Not much in the first few years, but I don't think it's going to be too, too long either. Now, I do want to mention two things. One, like I said, this isn't going to be an overnight thing. You aren't going to wake up tomorrow and see that every park has a completely different theme. And number two, I really don't think that they are going to go crazy with this as well. Something I would absolutely love to see are new Cedar Fair style areas. Look at areas like Aeronautica Landing, Adventure Port, or even Jungle Expedition at King's Dominion. And why not some of the other parks? I could definitely see some Six Flags parks adapting this and having some of their older areas being developed into newer Cedar Fair style areas. I could see it being themed to a local area, like in Six Flags St. Louis, an area would be themed to St. Louis. Now, when it comes to the other way around, talking about some of the IPs, talking about some rides being named after DC heroes, I do think that will happen eventually, but nowhere near as much as it used to. Prediction number three. More unique roller coasters will come out. In the past 15 years, Six Flags has gone more for quantity, trying to add something at every single Six Flags park, even if it is just a little minor. Now, in this period of time, there were many cloned rides and many budget rides. But on the flip side, they worked with many more manufacturers than the culprit. So let's look at Cedar Fair. Cedar Fair has kind of gone the opposite of Six Flags in that same time period. They have added less rides than Six Flags, but have worked with less manufacturers as well. With bigger additions like Fury 325, Orion, and Yukon Striker, Six Flags would have more minor additions, but all of those additions that I mentioned are by B&M and Cedar Fair has been working a lot more with B&M than other companies, which I am a fan of B&M, but at the same time, I would like to see the company spread its wings more. So with Cedar Fair's approach to adding a new roller coaster and Six Flags' relationship with many manufacturers, I could see a brand new strategy. So what could this business model look like? Well, I could see the new Six Flags combining both methods and using both business models to learn and improve. I believe that we will see new additions from many manufacturers, but mid-sized additions. Not too small, but not too large. Maybe around 100 to 200 feet. Now, I would say that's around the average height 
for the average thrilling roller coaster. You could have some 150 foot screen machines or low to the ground 100 foot airtime machines. So what would these rides look like? Let's look at some of the recent manufacturers that both of these companies have worked with and that the new Six Flags would have a relationship with. Gravity Group is a recent one as they have started working with them for their brand new for 2024 Bobcat coming to Six Flags Great Escape. This definitely surprised me and I'm really happy to see another company be in the relationship with Six Flags. And with the new Six Flags, we could definitely see these at some smaller parks. Another wooden coaster manufacturer that both of these companies have worked with in the past is GCI, otherwise known as Great Coasters International. Now, Cedar Fair has been working with them a lot more lately. Now, this gets a little confusing because these are both prominent wooden coaster manufacturers. The Gravity Group and GCI have been focusing more on unique wooden coaster layouts, looking at more inversions and sharp layouts, so if both manufacturers kind of go a little bit on a different route, I could see the manufacturers being with this company in the future. I'm excited to talk about this next one. It is Vacoma. So why am I excited? Well, for one, both companies are working with this manufacturer in 2024 with Kings Island and Six Flags Great Adventure adding major additions. And so with those patterns going on, and as long as those two coasters do good, I believe that the new Six Flags will be investing heavily in Vacoma. Some more thrilling Vacomas I could see coming to the chain are smaller LSM coasters, something similar to the Time Warp model like Formula and Energylandia, or even Tilt coasters. It was pretty hard to come up with a list of parks for this one because I could really see a new Vacoma at every single park. Getting into B&M or Bolliger and Mabillard, Cedar Fair is definitely more of a B&M fan than Six Flags is. Six Flags has also recently worked with them as well, so I don't think there will be any doubt that they will see B&M as a great company, and the new Six Flags will implement B&M as much as they can. While I don't see many Gigas coming out anytime soon, I could definitely still see some loopers, and maybe even some new surf coasters or family coasters coming to one of these parks. One to definitely not forget is Zamperla, because they are also working with both manufacturers as well in the 2024 season. Cedar Fair with, of course, Top Thrill 2 and other flat rides, and Six Flags with a brand new area at Fiesta, Texas. So, safe to say that Zamperla is going to stay in their realm. The final company I want to talk about is Intamin. Now, this was completely out of the equation until a few months ago when Six Flags announced that they are working with them once again. So, the new Six Flags, I could definitely see them doing the same. It's inevitable that Cedar Fair members are going to have to work with Intamin members again with the Ultra Splash coming to over Georgia, and other additions maybe in the future. Some of the Intamin models I could see at the new Six Flags parks are a vertical launch coaster, an Ultra Splash, or even a Hot Racer. Now, a reason I put a lot of these smaller rides and more compact rides in here is because I don't know if I would see a full-scale Blitz along the styles of Two Tatis or Velocicoaster anytime soon. With that being said, those Intamin vertical launch coasters and those Intamin Hot Racers are looking incredible, and if Intamin goes the budget route, well, the Joint Six Flags will definitely follow. Very similar to the Vacoma situation, it is really hard to count how many parks could be possible for getting these because the models range from very small to absolutely massive. So, we'll just have to wait and see. Prediction number four. Parks close to each other won't be too affected. A big fear is that the new Six Flags will close some parks nearby to others in the chain. I don't think this will happen anytime soon, or really any time in the foreseeable future, for a few reasons. But let's look at these parks by a case-by-case -case example. Looking at Knott's and Magic Mountain, these two parks are complete opposites. One of them is boasting on its roller coaster collection, and the other one, with a decent amount of roller coasters as well, is mainly a theme park. As long as they could restore some of the theming at Knott's Berry Farm, and keep some of the more record-breaking coasters at Magic Mountain, I would not be able to see too much of a difference in those parks. Looking more at Great Adventure and Dorney, one of them is in the style of a classic amusement park, and one of them is in the style of a massive roller coaster park. And to prove further, Dorney Park is getting a brand new roller coaster next year. In fact, both of these parks are getting coasters next year. I think all of the parks I just mentioned are A-OK, -okay and they are going to stay. And when it comes to the Bay Area, we all know what's going to happen to Great America, but we'll get to that later. Looking at other chains, many of them focus way more on theming than Six Flags and Cedar Fair do. I mean, just look at some of the companies in America that rule the theme park industry. 
SeaWorld, Universal, Hershen, and of course, Disney. All of these companies are absolutely massive and they focus a lot more on theming. Now, like I said, both of these chains have been focusing a lot more on theming recently, but at the end of the day, I don't think they're going to try to be universal. I think they are going to stay what they are and continue to do what they love to do the best. Prediction number six, many hotel and resort improvements will happen. This is one I've been excited to talk about. Cedar Fair has recently been focusing heavily on resorts. They have been building campgrounds near parks. They have been buying and remodeling different hotels, one of them being the Sawmill Creek Resort that has a whole golf course. We have also been seeing some parks like Carowinds add new hotels combined with other hotel chains to add a deal package. So what do I think is going to change? I think we are going to continue to see this Cedar Fair approach in the brand new Six Flags. We will see campgrounds, chain hotels, and maybe even full-on themed resorts. A really big focus for this joint company is to have year-round operations, and so something to increase that even in their northern locations would be to add something indoors, most likely a water park. Six Flags also has hotels with Darien Lake, Great Escape, and new for 2024, Great Adventure. So knowing that both of these chains are big in resorts, this new business model to say the least is going to focus on them as well, and I really think that's going to distinguish them from some of the other smaller local parks that may be in competition. Here are some parks that I would love to see get hotels in the new chain. The first one is Six Flags New England. First off, they definitely have the space to build some sort of resort, whether it be a campground or a hotel. Second off, I feel like something like an indoor water park here would be absolutely incredible, and that would ensure year-round operations. Six Flags Over Georgia is one I would love to see get something themed, and especially a big hotel. Of course, they have competition in Fun Spot, and as they might be building their company up with major roller coasters, Six Flags Over Georgia can take a step back and focus on a hotel. Truly, I think this would be a great fit here at the park, whether it just be a chain hotel or a full-on campground resort. It would either way be good for this resort. And finally, Prediction 7. California's Great America Rides will have more parks to relocate to. This one I feel like has been a little bit undershadowed. This one, for I feel obvious reasons, has not been talked about as much. Many people are focusing more on some of the new additions and some of the changes that will be happening to existing parks. We have already confirmed that this park and property will be sold and will no longer be an amusement property. So seeing all of these rides, that opens up so much more opportunity for both of these companies combining into one. Let's look at some of the major rides that I could see being relocated. A big one is Railblazer. The newest coaster at the park is also a state-of-the-art RMC single rail. And this is still a pretty novelty attraction. There are not many of these. Three parks that I thought about instantly were Darien Lake, because of its small size and long proximity from others, two, Six Flags Over Georgia, because of one competition, and two, while they're building that hotel, they could build this. And finally, number three, Carowinds. This is a major park, but at the same time, this would be a very unique ride to the area, and Railblazer is rather new anyway. It wouldn't be like relocating a 40-year-old ride to Carowinds, it would be like relocating a state-of-the-art RMC to Carowinds, and it would probably be many people's favorite rides there. Now looking at Patriot, I could see this going to a smaller park like Frontier City or Michigan's Adventure. The other B&M at the park is Flight Deck, and I could see this going to a park like Valley Fair. Now this is a former Cedar Fair park, so this really doesn't change my prediction from last time. And let's also not forget the water slides and other flat rides that are going to be relocated as well. I also feel like other parks within this company could do the same thing too, just with parks that are not necessarily closing. Looking at some other parks in the chains, they are definitely filling up with rides and could definitely lend a flat ride to a smaller park. But anyways, that is the end of my video. Let me know what you thought about it in the comments below and let me know what you think is going to happen to these combined chains in the near future. Anyways, until next time, this is Cedar Flags, and I will see you all later.